uh, at the Last Supper, Jesus said, I came forth from the Father and came into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. Uh, and he really summed up his whole life in that one sentence. Coming from the Father into the world, leaving the world to go to the Father. Since the Annunciation, since Advent and Christmas, we have been following Jesus' coming from the Father into the world. He came down from heaven, says the Creed. It's not about physics or topography. It means that he, the Son of God, came into our situation our life, our world, more and more, stage by stage. He went down under the water in the River Jordan at his baptism, down to our weakness when he was tempted by the devil in the desert. He went down into the distress of Gethsemane and the pain of the Passion. He was taken down from the cross and buried, and he descended into the world of the dead. As I say, it's not about geography or topography. It's about his, God's, the Son of God's sharing of our life, our death, our whole situation, the whole human thing. And then since Easter, we have been following the other trajectory. He rose from the dead. And today, 40 days after his resurrection, he ascends to the Father. This is the other half of the story, we might say. While they were looking on, he was taken up and a cloud hid him from their sight. It's about, again, not about geography or astrophysics. It is about us being taken up into his life, his situation. He came into ours so that we might enter into his. I shall be their God, goes the old Old Testament phrase, and they shall be my people. The same two sides, God with us and we with God, two-sided, reciprocal. He shared our sadness so we can share his joy. He identified with us so that we can be identified with him. And the great feasts that follow after Pentecost, think of the Assumption of Our Lady or All Saints, these are feasts of going up, are going up with him. Today, the psalm says, memorably, God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. And today's collect, in its rather solemn way, captures it very well. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head, that is Christ, has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. You see, he and we together. He coming down to us, we being taken up with him. Well, now here's a comparison. Uh, there's a football match taking place in Hampden Park on Saturday. And imagine that uh, the Dons win. Imagine that they win the cup. Now think of the delight of the fans at the match and of people in the city back here. The victory of 11 men, 
our team. It's really our victory, the strange mystery of identification. Christ today brings our humanity, taken from Mary, into the presence of his heavenly Father. He's raised above the entire universe. The angels rejoice. Saint Leo the Great says this, for human nature has been lifted above the dignity of all the creatures of heaven, let alone those of earth, passing beyond the ranks of the angels being raised above the high seat of the archangels to receive an elevation that has no limit until it is admitted into the eternal father's dwelling to share his glorious throne that is Christ that is us now it's not often one thinks of football fans as angels but here is Christ our captain lifting up the trophy, lifting up the cup after the victory, and that cup, that trophy, is us, is our human nature. And the angels rejoice. And here are we, back home, as it were, following the victory through the sacramental screen of the liturgy. And we too clap our hands. We too share this victory, sing praise for God, sing praise. Or here's another comparison for today. Think of the great explorers and discoverers uh, of, of the well, 16th century onwards, let's say, up to the early 20th century. They would reach the North Pole or discover an island or a whole new land. And what would they do? They'd plant the flag, the national flag. And the news would come back and the whole country swell with pride because one man has done something for the whole people. Again, it's this mystery of our identification. Well, our victorious lamb has planted the flag of humanity in the heart of the Trinity in the heart, in the bosom of the Father. There we are in God, body and soul, through the glorified humanity of Christ forever. Part, we might say, of the Trinity. It's astonishing. There's the flag of our wounded but glorified human nature blowing in the wind of the Holy Spirit. And our Columbus, our Captain Cook, our Shackleton has made it. And so we have too. Now, we could explore this just one step more. The grace of our Lord's passion is the forgiveness of sins. The grace of his resurrection is rebirth of our spiritual life, faith, hope, and charity in the human heart. The grace of his ascension today, each follows on from the other, is the opening of heaven. It's as though a whole new territory, a new continent, is opened up for us, has been annexed to the crown, we might say. We now have before us, as our future, a quite new, qualitatively different possibility, opportunity. Think of how people have yearned over the recent centuries to get to North America the land of the free, or a yearning now to get to Europe or Australia, longing to be safe and free and able to flourish, have a better life. Well, there's a glimpse there of what our Lord has done for us through his ascension. Now, in reality, as we know, migration doesn't always work out 
as we dream. And we are still always bound to this life by time and space. But today Jesus shows himself no longer confined by life's constrictions. He can now draw close to us who are harried by time and locked into space and destined to die. He can help us rise above this even when we're in the midst of it. And above all, he opens up a new kind of time and a new kind of space where our whole being will be safe and free and alive, and alive with a life that death cannot touch. How grateful we should be to Jesus, to our captain, to our victor, who has come down, taken us up, carried us through all the pain and agony of his passion to this great space, this great joy. Now we glimpse this new space, this new possibility, I think, in human love, in the loveliest moments of love between a man and a woman, or between friends, when we can completely accept and be completely accepted by another, give and receive from a full heart, having full access to another's heart and they to ours. That's a little foretaste of this new space. And heaven is that and more. It's the peace of total love with no fear of loss and change when we know we're beyond any possibility of rejection or condemnation, able to throw ourselves into the infinite ocean of divine love. Sing praise to our God, sing praise. Let us thank him for this mercy, for this vast hope, this new horizon, this future. Let's live lives that prepare us for it. Let us accept the purification of our hearts so that we can see God. Let's have a foretaste of it here tonight in peace around the altar, he in us and we in him through the Eucharistic mystery. The risen and ascended Lord here among us longing to give us his joy.